Raphael, the concept of information is becoming more and more important in physics. And it's becoming not just a descriptor of matter and energy, space and time, but some are saying that it is sitting below them and is more fundamental. Um, is this a, a fad or is there something to it? I think information really plays a very deep role in physics. Some would say that everything is ultimately just information. That seems like a rather impoverished view from the current viewpoint, but I think that our understanding, our deeper understanding of quantum mechanics uh, and quantum gravity in particular are going to depend on integrating information and information theory into our description of nature at a deeper level. And let me give you an example of how information comes into a you know, perfectly ordinary description of a physical system. Mm -hmm. If I give you a box filled with matter and all I tell you is a few little bits of information like, okay, there's some gas in there with a uh, certain temperature, then you don't know very much about what all these molecules are doing in there. That lack of information translates into what physicists call an enormous amount of entropy. Those two things are complementary to each other. What we mean by this is that there are many different fundamental states of the system which are not distinguished by that little bit of information I gave you. You could open the box and one of these molecules might be going this way or that way and the same thing for lots of the others. There are lots of options. Conversely, this means that if I want to describe nature very precisely, I have to give you a lot of information. And think of information as literally the stuff that you put on your laptop, on, you know, that, that, that's stored on the hard drive. If you try to put too much of it, you run out of space. It's that kind of information. Bits and bytes. I would have to tell you how every molecule is moving and, and where it is right now. And, um, and if I give you that, enough of that kind of information, and at some point you know everything about what's happening in that box. And you have a complete understanding of the state of the world if your world is that box. Mm -hmm. Now, one really fascinating um, connection that we've discovered, which relates information to space-time geometry, uh, is called the holographic principle. And it hints at a very fundamental role of information in the hint for, in, in the search for the quantum theory of gravity, the, the, the big, the holy grail mm -hmm. that we're all after, uh, some resolution of the conflict between quantum mechanics, which we usually think of the theory of the small things, but which is really valid on all scales, it's just not usually important on all scales, and general relativity, Einstein's great theory of gravity, which tends to be important uh, on large scales, but go jump into a black hole and you'll find out that it can also be important on small scales once you get crushed near the singularity inside the black hole. So we need to marry these two theories. Now, why does that have something to do with information? Well. There's a fascinating pattern that we've discovered uh, in, in, which is right there in front of our eyes, but which is so weird that it clearly requires a deeper explanation, and that explanation can only come from a completely unified theory of quantum mechanics, gravity, and matter. So what is this thing that we've discovered? What we've discovered is that the amount of information, mm -hmm. the number of different states, say, of these molecules in your box, that you need to specify to tell me absolutely everything that goes on inside this box is actually limited by the area of the walls of the box. Which sounds counterintuitive because you would think it would have to be the volume. It should be related to the volume. That's our, that's our usual intuition. Now, the area, we have to measure it in some units. Okay? There are some fundamental units that come out of physics called the Planck units. So think of tiling uh, the walls of the box with little tiles, plank tiles, which are 10 to the minus 33 centimeters across on each side. So tiny, tiny, tiny fractions of an inch. And, and, and you, 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 you know, count how many tiles that fit. You know, that, that's how many zeros and ones you have to write down mm -hmm. uh, to specify completely the state of the world in this room. Now, you're going to do even better than just saying where the molecules are going you can even say what kind of molecules are in there or whether there's maybe something completely different in there. In other words, no matter what the smallest particles are, you know fundamentally everything there is to say about this region. How did we discover this? Well, at first we discovered this by thinking about what happens when you throw the box into a black hole. Because we know that in quantum mechanics information cannot get lost and we know how much information is stored on the horizon of a black hole. 
And by looking at how much more information the black hole now has after I've thrown the box in, I can put a limit on how much information could have been in that box in mm. the first place. And that limit is this counterintuitive, crazy sounding one. It has to do with the area of the box and not with the volume of the box. But ultimately, the relationship is much more general than that, and it works even for space-time regions which you couldn't throw into a black hole because, for example, they are a large expanding universe or they're already inside a black hole, so you can't make a black mm -hmm. hole out of them anymore. There's a completely general relation which had no right to be true that tells us that the, the size of space-time surfaces and the information content, the, the possible number of different things that could be going on inside them, where inside we have to define in a very precise way, and it, it, you have to look at light rays that come off of these surfaces and what sort of matter they see. The amount of that information will never exceed the area of these surfaces. Mm. And that pattern is so pervasive and universal, and at the same time so surprising, that it requires a deeper explanation. And that explanation can only come from quantum gravity, because information how many different things could be going on? That's a statement about quantum mechanics. That's how many right. different quantum states right. you could have. Right. The area of surfaces in space-time, that has to do with general relativity, with, with geometry, the kind of geometry that Einstein used to explain gravity. So you definitely need to understand both at the same time to explain a relation like this. In fact, I would go further and say you have to have a completely unified theory of quantum mechanics, gravity, and matter because there are certain types of matter which we can fantasize about, but which apparently don't exist in nature, which would allow you to violate this relationship, which would allow you to put much more information into a given space-time region uh, than, than, than uh, uh, controlled by the area. We don't see any such matter, and we have other reasons to believe that it doesn't exist, but ultimately anything that explains such a general relation will also have to explain why such matter doesn't exist. In other words, it has to explain uh. quantum gravity and has to explain what kind of matter can actually exist in the universe. So it's a very exciting relation and it leads me to believe that information is going to play a fundamental role in the formulation of a successful quantum gravity theory. And the reason is, is because the information on the surface of this defined with t Planck length uh, pl area tiles is sufficient totally sufficient to describe the quantum mechanical uh, nature of everything within that volume. Is that right? That is correct. The amount of information that you can fit uh, on the surface of, 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 of some box <laughs> at a density of one bit per Planck tile yeah. uh, is sufficient to tell you absolutely everything that could happen within this box. I don't have to tell you uh, what the temperature is in this box, I don't have to tell you what the pressure is. Or the kinds of particles. And I don't even have to tell you what the matter is in there. Even if it's a quark gluon soup or it's a bunch of strings doing funny stuff. In other words, it, we know something about the fundamental amount of information in the world, even though we may not yet know what the fundamental constituents yeah, are. Yeah. And that is what makes, what makes this relation so powerful. So therefore so you have an absolute limit on, on how much infom on the information needed to describe all this. I mean, you, you have a maximum. That's right. We have what a, a th this gives us, this relation between information and area is actually discovered through what we call entropy bounds. Uh, entropy bounds it just sort of turns the words on, on, their, on their head. If I give you this area and I don't tell you anything about it, how much ignorance do right, you have? Right, right. Well, you have as much ignorance as the amount of information I'd have to give you to tell you exactly what's right, going on in right. there. So it's about equally on the entropy or on the information uh, of, 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 of the region that you want to describe. So there is something fundamental about information in order to describe the whole system. There is clearly some, something fundamental about information that, that governs the relation between quantum mechanics and space-time geometry.